Hello, I'm your executive coach, Yuri Galimidi. In this video, I'd like to share with you an unexpected lesson I learned last week about what it takes to be an exceptional leader. I learned this from one of my new coaching clients, and soon thereafter, I validated it with the renowned leadership guru, Brene Brown. I believe that if you adopt this leadership principle, your growth as a leader will take a new meaning immeasurably more powerful than before. Also, at the end of this video, I'd like to share with you a special message. So please stay tuned for that. Last week, I met for the first time with a new coaching client. As I usually do with my new coaching clients, I asked her what she would like to focus on and what outcome she would like to achieve from our coaching work together. Her answer caught me by surprise. In fact, I have not heard this coaching objective from any of my coaching clients during my 12 years of coaching. Usually, the coaching objectives that my clients want to focus on include things such as, I want to develop my presence and confidence, or I want to develop my communication skills, or I want to be more politically savvy, or I want to find a CEO position within the next nine months. As you may have noticed, all of these coaching goals are focused on what the person wants to achieve for himself or herself. But what I heard from my new client last week was completely different. I'm quite happy with my career, she said, and I know I have to spend a few more years in my current position before I'm ready to move on to the next level. So my coaching objective is to learn how to help my team members become the best professionals they can possibly be. That's it? I asked her. Yes, she answered confidently. So there is nothing you want to achieve for yourself? I asked, thinking that perhaps there is something else that she wasn't ready to share with me yet. No, she said. All I want is to become an expert in helping my team members be the best that they can be. Okay, I answered. I believe that I can help you achieve this goal. By complete coincidence, last week I bought Brene Brown's book, Dare to Lead. If you don't know her, I highly recommend that you check her out on TED Talks as well as on YouTube. And right there, in the introduction to her book, Brene Brown says, I define a leader as anyone who takes responsibility for finding the potential in people and processes and who has the courage to develop that potential. But how do you translate this novel concept to practice? How do you find the time amid the endless back-to-back -back meetings to devote to helping your team members grow and become better professionals. Here are a few strategies I've learned from the best luminaries in the field of leadership. Number one, cultivate psychological safety. Psychological safety is a concept developed by Professor Amy Edmondson of the Harvard Business School. It means that each member of your team should feel completely safe to share their ideas and opinions, even if they are contrary to the prevailing wisdom in the room, without fear of being ignored, rejected, belittled, or humiliated. Professor Edmondson found that teams that enjoy psychological safety produce much better results than teams where the leader or someone vocal in the team always dominates the discussion. To cultivate a culture of psychological safety, I recommend that you talk with your team members one-on-one -on -one and as a group to encourage them to share their ideas and opinions with the team at every possible opportunity. 
Let your team members know that it is your goal to create a team culture where every member of your team knows that it is their responsibility to share their ideas with everyone and that they will be listened to and respected as equally valued members of the team. Over time, you will observe the professional growth of your team members as active contributors to the team's mission. Number two, presence, confidence and communication skills. Perhaps the area that most of my clients ask me to help them with is presence, confidence and persuasive communication. As a leader who is intent on helping her or his team members become the best they can be, you too can help them develop these traits and skills. To achieve this, you may consider giving them regular opportunities to stretch the boundaries of their comfort zone. Give them opportunities to run your team meetings, to present to senior management, and whatever else will stretch their abilities. Then, after each such opportunity, give them constructive feedback and specific recommendations for improving their presence, their confidence, and their communication abilities. Number three, personal brand, credibility, and standing. Very often, my coaching clients ask me to help them build their personal brand, their credibility, and their professional standing within their company and beyond in their professional communities. As their leader, you can help your team members achieve the same goals. Help them understand what personal brand they want to develop and what strategies, roadmap and milestones they could use to build their brand, their credibility and their professional standing within the company and beyond. Help them explore what kind of professional they want to be known as. How can they grow to become the go-to person in their area of expertise? How can they share their knowledge with their communities of interest within the company and outside the company? And what professional associations they might choose to become active in and how can they build a plan to make all of this happen. Number four, developing their signature strength. The concept of signature strength was developed by Professor Martin Seligman out of the University of Pennsylvania. The traditional performance assessment approach glosses over our core strength and focuses on our deficiencies the things that we have to fix. But Professor Seligman says that it is much more effective to work on leveraging the skills and capabilities we are naturally good at than trying to correct behaviors and traits that are foreign to our core nature and character. Spend time with each of your team members to identify their signature strength and partner with them to develop strategies to leverage these strengths to produce the most impactful outcomes for the company and for themselves. To summarize, you can help your team members become the best that they can be by diverting a significant proportion of your time from answering emails and tending to tasks on your to-do list to working with them on the following strategies. Number one, cultivating a culture of psychological safety. Number two, helping them develop their presence, confidence and communication skills. Number three, helping them build their personal brand, credibility and professional standing. And number four, helping them identify and leverage their signature strengths. In closing, I want to thank you all for being such a loyal audience for the past 12 years. I also want to thank you for the countless supporting comments I received from many of the 40,000 people who listened to my recent webinars on PMI. 
If you find this content of value, I have a request to make. I would love the opportunity to share my executive coaching and leadership training programs with your company so that your colleagues at work can also benefit from these programs. So I'd like to ask for your support in connecting me with the HR person responsible for training and development at your company. If you'd like to discuss with me the best ways to introduce me to your HR person, please email me at yuri at the will to change dot com and we can figure out the best way to achieve the goal. And with that, until my next video, please stay safe and healthy. Take care.